Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here from the Pixel Pushers uh, YouTube channel. We're looking at uh, Affinity Photo again and we're looking, uh, this is a follow on actually of the video that I did just yesterday which was all about creating custom presets within the um, crop tool. So today we'll be looking at custom brushes or starting to look at custom brushes because custom brushes is a whole area in itself. But today we'll just be starting to look at custom brushes uh, for a signature or a watermark or for a text or a name. Something fairly simple but creating it as a, a tailor-made brush as opposed to um, writing it individually on each photograph so that you get the consistency and it's actually speed as well. Now, when we look at um, creating custom brushes for things like um, uh, compositing work or for creating um, images like leaves or grass or clouds, uh, that's a whole different ball game. But the principle is exactly the same. First, you need a source file uh, and then you need to save it as a brush and then the application of the brush. Okay, so before we do anything else, I'm just going to quickly go back to this is a, an addendum really and an add on to the um, custom uh, um, crop uh, preset. So I'm just going to go back to the crop tool. So view this as a follow on and I'll put a link into that video if you haven't already watched it. You really ought to watch that as well. Um, but this can, can sit independently of that. So we, in the uh, uh, crop tool here on the top left and make sure that we've got resample selected and we go to um, the uh, gear icon which gives us all the um, uh, categories uh, what's already there now these are the two that we created yesterday in the other video but you go back to that video to watch those those are social media post crops suitable for social media but i just want to show you for example photographic paper these are the pre uh, a preset to four built-in ones for photographic typical photographic paper sizes but let's say you want to add, it, add your own uh, photographic paper size for example if you're doing lots of panoramas or extreme widescreen type of images but they're for print purposes and you're going to be printing them and perhaps you want to have a, a, a display of several of them you want to make sure that they're all exactly the same ratio you bought the frames you bought the the mounts and you want them to be exactly the same so how do you do that well it's basically the same thing so we we, we essentially um, let's just go back to that we essentially uh, we're at the crop we want to make sure it's uh, resample <clears throat> okay and um, we want to uh, go to the um, see one of these uh, options okay so the the units are right uh, but we want to create our own okay so if we say we want to change um, we want to um, uh, create our own there so if we say we want it to be 12 inches by um, 6 inches for example um, 300 dpi because it's for print purposes that's optimal for print just click that again so that uh, makes sure it uh, resizes it appropriately um, now when we go into that and we want to save that we want to create that as a preset okay and we want to give it a new name just like before now make it something appropriate so if we said 12 by 6 so that's um uh, well, it could be obviously 24 by um, 6 or whatever you want it to be. 12 by 6 um, panoramic. Panoramic. Uh, make sure that's spelled right. Okay, panoramic. And where do we want it? And this is key here as well because we're not putting it in the social media section. We want to put it in the photographic paper section where we've already got some uh, pre installed ones that come with Affinity uh, uh, already there. So if you click on create now, and now when we look at the photographic paper sizes, you can see those are the four that were already there and we've put in a new one. Um, and it is uh, appropriate in the sense that it's got that same ratio. Um, so if we want to be cropping it for like a panoramic effect, then that's what we would do. Obviously, you probably wouldn't use that if you're going to create a panorama from scratch. You'd use the other tools which have already been um, explored. Uh, the built-in options and I'll, I'll put a link into that uh, creating a panorama separately.
Okay, so that's just a quick addendum to the uh, to the tutorial from yesterday. So now let's look at the brushes. Um, so the brushes panel is on the right hand side, or as uh, Affinity calls it, a studio. Um, I call it a palette or a panel, but it's entirely up to you. So you've got these uh, four uh, panels at the top here, and the brushes one typically sits there. I personally move the brushes one over to there so it's the second one along because the colors one is the one that we tend to use the most of then brushes then histogram um, and then swatches now the swatches really should go next to the color one so you could put it there and really make sure the brushes one is the appropriate place where you're going to be needing to use it other people place it elsewhere put it down here but that's entirely up to you okay now within the brushes palette panel or studio you've got a whole range of categories now thing to note here these are in alphabetical order so you might think well why is acrylics right at the top and of course you've got oils and uh, pencils and so on and pens but the basic brushes is really your default one and this is where most of your brushes will be that they're pre-installed some feathered brushes different size brushes hard edge brushes and so on i mean you can fine tune them you can change the size of them obviously Obviously, once you've selected the brush, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, but that's normally the default categories basics. But don't uh, uh, miss out the fact there are a number of others, quite a few others in these other categories. These are clearly for very specific purposes, like digital painting or digital art, or even using them for uh, making a mask or making um, a painting out a masked area or painting in a border because they've got a different like a like a, a painterly effect to it and then you've got loads of others within here and of course you can explore those and the watercolor ones are pretty good as well but you notice here I've got one called custom signature brushes now I've created that category uh, that won't be there by default so the first thing you would need to do is create an appropriate category so let's put it back onto basic the first thing you would do is for each of these um, uh, studios at the top here you'll, you'll notice there's these three little uh, bands or bars here this is like the sub menu and you always get that you've got that with the um, crop tool as well so when you're on the brushes uh, palette you click on those three to get the extra win extra menu and there the very first one says create new category obviously you can create one then rename it so let's just create new category now that's just created a category but doesn't allow us to change the name of it um, okay so it's created one just called brushes okay so creates one called brushes so if we select that one and then say we want to rename it rename it and it's called brushes at the moment so let's just say we want to call it um uh, signatures well, let's call it watermarks just to differentiate it from the signature one that's already there watermarks okay so that category is created and if we have a look it'll be in alphabetical order um uh, as i said earlier so you've got their basic custom and watermarks right at the bottom and uh, so that's where that is so how do we actually create a brush in the first place so what we want to do is this is what we do we want to create a blank document and then type on there and then save that so let me start from scratch then um so we go to file new and we we want to do it as a print um uh, stock file because we want to make sure the resolution is reasonably high because there is a good chance we're going to be using these brushes on a print as well as on a digital uh, only file uh, display only file so it doesn't need to be a large document it could be a5 a6 it could be quite small let's try a6 make it landscape because most text tends to flow left to right in a horizontal fashion so it just gives you a better um, canvas on which to um, type on um, the thing to remember is make sure it's a transparent background you don't want any white or any color in the background so it's basically just a empty background okay nothing else uh, you need to do on here click create so what you've got is you've got a blank um, canvas so to speak not even a white background then we go to text if you if it's a text 
brush that you're creating and just roughly um, click and drag to, to write what you want to do. So if I just said, um, uh, by the way, on a Mac, if you do uh, Option and G, it gives you the copyright symbol on a Windows machine. I believe it's um, Alt uh, and and there's a, a different digit number. I'll find that out and I'll put it in the, um, uh, it's a little bit more involved, um, but you might find it in the uh, Wingding section of the of the fonts. Okay, so if I just say copyright, okay, then we want to resize it a little bit just so that it um, fits. Doesn't really matter at this stage because remember, when once it becomes the tip of a brush, it's the brush size that you'll be changing. Okay, but what's key here is that you change the font at this stage. You can't do it afterwards because it won't be a a text file afterwards what it will be is a is a brush so just select it all and choose you the font that you want um, obviously it's different fonts are um, suitable for different things so you, you find a font that's suitable uh, whether it's formal or whether it's not formal that's entirely up to you so I'm just going to pick one that's a little bit distinctive just so that it's um, uh, obvious that we've uh, changed the font Okay, so let's uh, let's go for that. Okay, it's very scripty font, and uh, that's done. So we don't need to do anything else now. What we need to do is save that. So we go to file. We're not saving it because we're not saving the whole uh, Affinity Photo document. We're just exporting that element of it. So we click on export. Remember the difference between export and save as in Affinity is that uh, export. Um, doesn't uh, remember all the edits whereas um, uh, it, when you export it as a PNG or a JPEG but save as saves it as an affinity file a native file format which of course it can only be open in affinity and it's great for coming back and doing further edits on it but that's not what we're doing here it will default to JPEG probably in most cases but you must it must be PNG because a PNG file format allows us to have a blank background an alpha channel an alpha channel so we can see through to the background so it's just the text that we get selected otherwise you'll put a white background behind it if we said jpeg so we want png and the other thing is to remember we don't want the whole document so that this whole page is the whole document that's not what we're saving so what we want to do is selection only so you can do selection area or selection only it's better to do selection only so click selection only you can see it's a very small file only 30 kilobytes well that's fine that's all we want if you want to preview it just click on preview that shows you what it looks like that's fine and then next we just go to export and uh, we just export that file and uh, we just obviously want to rename it so if we give it a name um, appropriate name if we just said copy right Name. Uh, no copyright watermark copyright watermark and um, the other thing to do which I should have mentioned earlier you'd need to if you're going to be creating brushes regularly you need to create set up a new folder uh, anywhere on your computer you know put it in the in the pictures folder um, put it on your desktop as I've done here for demonstration purposes create a folder called brushes OK, so that's where when you're saving an image like this or a sample that you've uh, your source image, you put those source files in one location. So you just create a separate folder, call it brushes or, or brush um, source images or anything like that. And um, and then when you save it, you save it in there. So a you know where it is, plus it makes things finding things a bit easier. So I've already created that folder. Click on save. OK, so now we're done with this. We don't need this file anymore, so we can get rid of that. OK, so don't want, we don't need to save that. I'm pretty confident I don't need that anymore. Um, OK, so on this image, we want to put a watermark or a signature or a copyright symbol. What we need to do first, we obviously make sure we're in the brushes palette. But what we haven't done, let me just go back to the, um, the basic, because that's where you start from normally. Now we want to import that brush image to create a brush so we've already created a character category we've already renamed the category you'd only probably need to do that occasionally we want to have a new 
brush a new image brush now I'll do another video to talk about what the difference between these are uh, really you won't most people aren't going to use new round brush or new square brush what they're going to use is a new intensity brush or a new image brush okay so in this case it's an image that we've saved um, a source file and so it's a new image brush that we want and it's obviously now asking me well where is that source file i saved it in brushes and once you do this two three times your computer actually will default to that folder which is good um, certainly does on a mac so i don't have to keep finding it but if it did if it didn't i just go to desktop find the um, folder called brushes which is there and then i've created one earlier but this is the one i've just done copyright watermark png the other was a png as well just select that and open it Okay, now the fact is that that brush is black in color and there it is there. Okay, and now that's in the basic brushes. We don't want it to be in the basic brushes. So while it's highlighted, if you just right click it and you can say move brush to category and we want to move it to watermarks, which is what the category we created earlier on. So that's been moved. So it's no longer there. So if I click in that drop down, there's watermarks and there's one brush in there okay if you double click any brush it brings up this key dialog box where all the parameters of the brush can be changed the size of the brush um, uh, all the other uh, elements to it and really it's the spacing that you want to do if you uh, look up here at the top here and you can just about see that that if the spacing is too close together it will behave as if you're painting with a bit of text but that's not what we want so you want to space it out so that it's the each time you click the mouse it just paints one blob of paint if you like and of course that one blob will be um, your signature or your text so uh, you, trial and error you'll be able to do that so just make sure the spacing's right all the way up to as far as it'll go don't need to change anything else everything else needs to stay the same for this type of brush click close now I need to now go on to I need to select the paint brush tool on the left hand side now I've got the paint brush tool I've got the right brush uh, you can probably already see as I increase the size of my brush now I'm using the left and right square bracket keys of course you can do it from within the brushes um, uh, uh, dialog box that we just showed you or you can change the width of the brush from this slider here but personally I just think it's so much easier just to use the um, uh, square bracket key okay and if I put it there and I just click once just press once and there's my there's my watermark or signature if I want to make it bigger I could put it there so I'm not I'm not actually painting with it even though it's a paintbrush I could but I'm just clicking it once and position it where I want to now you might say well that's all right but what about if I want to resize it after I've clicked on it ah well the key thing to that is not do what I just did is put it on the original background image what you need to do is create a new pixel layer first so let me just undo those last two steps okay so everything else is exactly the same what we do uh, you got the original image click on new pixel layer which is blank so there's nothing on there but the rest of it we do exactly the same just press once that is now on its own layer not only can we um, resize it if I go up to the um, a move and resize tool not only can I do that and position it wherever I want and swivel it round you know do all those kind of things um, and move it of course not only can I do that but also because it's on a separate layer I can reduce the opacity down so it's more of a watermark so it's more subtle um, I can even change the blend modes if I wanted to if I wanted to change the blend mode so you could perhaps maybe see um, part of the image uh, through it like that one yeah, we could do that that's not a uh, you can't do that if it wasn't a separate layer and the other thing that you can do of course is to put some effects on it so if we click on the effects 
um, tab we've already covered effects in other videos um, if we put an outline around it for example we could put an outline around it not a black outline because of course the text is black so let's put let's put a green outline actually because there's some greenery in the image let's put a green outline to it might not be ideal but let's uh, do it anyway just for demonstration purposes so there we go we've got a green outline around that text uh, or you could give it um, um, an outer glow or blur it or um, um, give it a, a, a shadow, outer shadow, which is uh, always a, a, a looks very good. So just up these, offset the shadow a little bit. Okay, so there we go. It gives it a bit of a 3D effect. That's entirely up to you to do what you want to do. But having it on this separate layer means that you can apply all these other um, variables, whether it's an adjustment layer, whether it's a, uh, a effect, or whether it's um, uh, uh, the blending modes, or indeed changing the opacity. So always put it on a separate layer, and that gives you that uh, possibility. If we zoom into it now, you can see that if I move, click on the move tool, I can move that around and you can see the shadow is there, the outline is there and, um, uh, and that's purely from a brush. Okay, I hope that's helpful and you find that useful. Now, like I said, creating custom brushes, this is just the start, creating a signature or a copyright symbol um, or a watermark. Um, and the key to a watermark is changing the opacity, of course, bring the opacity right down so it's semi-transparent. It's subtle, it's there, it does its job, but it's not overpowering your image at all. OK, uh, make sure that you uh, leave some comments or feedback. That'll be really appreciated. And of course, uh, a subscription. If you haven't already subscribed, that would be really useful as well. Um, any uh, feedback, I'll take it on board and we can uh, plan that into future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.